All right, so for this game, we have what is essentially just a straight sequencing game. So we'll, uh, we'll set it up accordingly. We have these six spaces to work with, and we've got six elements, L, M, N, T, V, W. And essentially nothing out of the ordinary here. Each one of these cities is just gonna show up once in one of these six positions. Let's, uh, let's get into the rules. So the first rule says that L has to go at some point after T. So I suppose that means that we have to have T before L. Next, we are told that V has to go immediately next to W. So V and W, these guys are gonna have to be consecutive, but they could still go either way. Next, we are told that Toronto must be separated from Montreal by exactly two cities, but that could still also go either way. Now, we do have a T on the board, but it's gonna be a bit messy in terms of kind of connecting these rules together. So you know what, let's just set it up separately. We can say that T and M are gonna have to have exactly two spaces in between, and this could also flip. So depending on which way the T goes, the L might go after this block, or it could be if the T is over here, then it can go within the block as well. So it gets a bit messy. Next, we are told that Vancouver has to be separated from LA by also exactly two other cities. Um, so same kind of problem. It's kind of hard to, because this could go either way, it's kind of hard to incorporate that with this rule. And even this rule gets kind of messy. So let's just do this separately. Um, v and L are going to have to have exactly two spaces between them. Um, yeah, now from there, because all of these restrictions, they're reversible, it's kind of hard to put anything more permanent on the board. So you know what, let's uh, let's let's jump straight into the questions. So the first question here, number 17, what could be the complete setup of the game? So as usual, we do this by the rules. Um, first rule, T before L. So A looks good, B does not, we have L before T, so we can get rid of B. C looks good, D looks good, E also looks good. Let's keep going. V and W have to be consecutive, so a has them consecutive, C has them consecutive, D does not. They are separated by Montreal, so we can get rid of answer choice D. And E has V and W consecutive. Next, T and M have to be exactly with two spaces between them. So answer choice A, we have that. Answer choice C, we have that. We have N and L in between them. And E has just one in between them, so that doesn't work. We can get rid of E. And lastly, V and L have to have exactly two between them. So between A and C, A looks good, two spaces in between. C has three spaces in between, which is not cool. So the best answer to question number 17 is A. And as usual, let's just plug that into the board. Um, so we essentially have T, V, W, and then M, L, N. Next. Now question number, looks like all of these are global except for 21. So let's just take a quick look at 21 first. 21 says, if M is in the first year, well, let's play this out. If we have M in year one, well, first of all, T has to be exactly two spaces apart. So that means that T is gonna have to be in position four. Next, what else can we do with this? I mean, T is before L, so L is gonna show up somewhere over here. And I suppose V is gonna show up somewhere over here with W, right? Because V and W have to be next to each other. So we have a little bit of flexibility. I guess we can say that you're really you're going to have V or W in two and three. And then who do we have left? We have L and N in positions five and six. And depending on where the L goes, um, that would kind of, or the L and V. So if L is in five, for example, then V would have to be in two and then W will go three and N there, or if L's in six, then again, yeah, it'll adjust accordingly. So to the question now is, what cannot be true? A, W in three, and that looks like it's possible. Answer choice B, V is in three also, that looks possible. T is in four, that has to happen. N is in five, that could happen. L is in three, and no, that's definitely not gonna happen. So to the question, what cannot be true? The best answer is E for question number 21. Next, I suppose, let's go back to the globals. Question number 18, what must be true? Answer choice A, Toronto is in the first year, and no, because I mean, we've seen 
Montreal right there, so that certainly doesn't have to be true. Answer choice B, M is in the fourth year, and again, no, because we've seen Toronto in the fourth year as well, so that doesn't have to be true. Next, T is before M, and no, in this scenario, T was after M, so that certainly, again, that doesn't have to be true. Answer choice D, N is immediately next to V. Ooh, that's convenient. Actually, in both of these scenarios, N and V were not consecutive, so that didn't have to be true. Answer choice E, the meeting in New York is separated from the meeting in Washington in, by exactly two other cities. So does that have to be true? I mean, incidentally, it actually does seem like it. so far it has been, right? Because in this scenario, there were two cities separating N and W. And in this scenario, I mean, we don't exactly know where N and W went, but since V and L were separated by two, the same thing would have ended up happening with N and W. So if V and L were, for example, in two and five, then N and W would have been in three and six. So in these two scenarios, that does seem like it had to be true. Now, to be fair, we have already crossed off all of the other answer choices. Um, which does kind of leave us with E as the only viable one. So it seems like, yeah, answer choice E does seem like it has to be true. Um, so we can kind of pick it up as the right answer choice here. Now, to be fair, we haven't really proven that N and W has to be separated by exactly two cities. Um, but since it's the only available answer choice and it lines up with our previous history, that seems like it would be the right answer choice. In fact, we could um, also add this as an independent rule now. It seems like N and W, for whatever reason, it ends up being the case. And that's probably related to the fact that these two also have to be separated by sets of two. Um, N and W will also have to be separated by exactly two. Next, question number 19. There's exactly one setup if which is true. So basically, what would lock the game? A, L is in the fifth year and... Now, I mean, in both of these scenarios that we've seen so far, if L was in year five, then yes, that was incidentally complete. But would that be enough to completely lock the game if it was true? And generally speaking, I mean, if we put L into five, all that would do is it would put V into, into two, and T would have to go somewhere before. But at this point, it seems like it's still kind of flexible because couldn't W still go either in one or three? Perhaps that, that feels like it could still move around a little bit. Let's let's keep going for now. Answer choice B. M is in year six. Well, if you put M into six, then T would have to go into three. And T before L means that L has to go into four or five. But still, both of those seem like they could be viable. You could have had an L here or an L here. So that doesn't seem like it would be enough to lock the game. Answer choice C. N is in five. Would that be enough to lock the game? Um, and I mean, if we use our new deduction over here, then if n is in five, I suppose that would mean that the w has to be in two. But the v, v still seems like it could kind of shuffle between one and three. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Let's keep going. Answer choice D, v is in year one. And if, well, okay, so v is in one, then w is in two. And to be fair, we also know that if v is in one, then we have to have l Oh, hello, yeah, here it is. Then L would have to go into four, which means that T would have to go into three because T has to go prior. You know what, let's, uh, let's run this. So if we have V in one, then W would have to go into two. At this point, V and L have to be separated by exactly two spaces. So L has to go over here. And since T is before L, then T has to go into three. And then T and M are two apart. So that means that M happens to be in six and N happens to be in five, which incidentally just kind of goes on to reaffirm that N and W for the record have to be separated by two. So the best answer to question number 19 is D. Next, number 20. Which of the following is a complete list of years of where we could have had a W? Well, so far historically, we've seen W in both years two and three. So we can cross off anything that doesn't have a two or a three. That would get rid of answer choice A, and that would get rid of answer choice D. So that's a pretty good start. Now, between answer choices B, C, and E, it seems like year four is, is always there. So that's not really controversial. So really, the only questions are years one, five, and six. Now, 
as far as what we know about W, I mean, W seems pretty flexible. Now, you'll notice that only answer choice E has year one. So you know what, let's test that out first because W seems like it could go in a variety of places. And if we could prove that it could go into the first year, that would be enough to disqualify answer choices B and C off the bat and answer the question. So let's try this out. Could we have a W over here? Now, if we did, the V would have to go next to it. So we know that V would have to go here. L would have to go into five, so that would lock them in place. Um, T has to go before L, but also T and M have to have two spaces apart. So the only way to make that work is to put T over here, M over there, and I guess N would go in four, which again reaffirms this seeming deduction. Now, from there, that actually seems legit, doesn't it? There doesn't seem to be any issue here. So W could go into one, so that gets rid of answer choices B and C and leaves us with E as the best answer here. Next, question number 22. What could happen? Let's take a look. Answer choice A, could we have L in one? And I mean, we have an, oh no, of course not, because L has to go after T, so that's not gonna work. Um, could we have N in two? And maybe, because if we put N into two, that doesn't seem like it triggers much. Um, according to this deduction that we made, W would have to go into five, and that also seems okay. Let's just take a quick look at the other ones. Could we have M in three? Well, if we put M into three, I guess T and M have to be two apart, so that would force T to go into six, and then L has nowhere to go because L is supposed to be after T, so that's not gonna work. Um, could we have had V in four? And if we put V into four, oh, again, same kind of issue. So V and L have to be two apart. So V in four forces L to go into one, but then L has to go after T, which is not gonna work. And could we have T in six? And definitely not, because T has to go before L. So that leaves us with B as the only viable answer here. Um, lastly, question 23, what must be false? So what could never happen? A, L is immediately next to N. And actually, yeah, this is an easy pickup. We've seen L and N next to each other several times, so that easily could have happened. Answer choice B, L is immediately next to W. Could we have had L next to W? So far, it doesn't look like we have, but let's take a look. What do we know about L and W? Is there anything inherently wrong with that? And actually, yeah, there is, isn't there? Because L has to be two spaces away from a V but W has to be next to the V. So no matter what you do, if the W has to be next to this V, it's either gonna go right next to it here or on the other side, but it would never be next to L. So there we go. It stands to reason that L could never be immediately next to W. Best answer here is B for question 23. Just in case though, uh, let's take a look at the rest. C, N is immediately next to T. Could we do that? And yes, in this scenario, we could have had T over here and N over there. So that could have happened. Answer choice D, T is immediately next to V. And same thing, in this scenario, V could have gone here. So we could have had V and T consecutive. Lastly, T is immediately next to W, same deal. We had T here, we could have had a W there. So that could have happened. And also for the record, we've seen TW and TV over there. Um, but either way, that could have happened. So the best answer once again is answer choice B.